starting the recording. Okay, so welcome to the phone call tonight. Um, Holly uh, Kelly is in the hospital. Um, he has, uh, they say it's not serious that he's got a dehydration problem. So he's getting uh, a drip in order to hydrate his body. I don't think it's more than that. Raffer sent me an email saying that Kelly had sent him an email saying, why don't Raffers, why don't you and Steve do something tonight? And so I said, Raffers, why don't you do it? <laughs> and then Raffers said to me, no, Steve, you go ahead and do it. And then Raffers doesn't even show up tonight, that chicken. So here we are. Um, that's what's, yeah, that's what's going on for me. So let's uh, go down through and say hello. Uh, we're going to create our agenda as we go. We have a couple more people joining us. So, um, Joe, how are you feeling and what's your expectation tonight? Uh, I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, you know, my expectation is that we're going to keep moving forward, um, you know, with Kelly in mind, uh, and that uh, we'll get work a little bit further on what we were covering last week uh, and get to the automation section, I believe. So great. That's that's what I'm feeling. Henry, how are you doing? What would you like to get out of today? Thank you. Thank, thank you, Joe. Feeling good. Um, can't see Manu today. I don't think he's coming in today, but um, yeah, there's a good rugby game on. So. <laughs> Sad to hear about Kelly. Hope he does well. You know, always, always thoughts to the best for him. Yeah, it'll be interesting this call. Perhaps as a thought, Stephen, maybe we could look at reviewing your definitions, go back through some of the stuff that we've done in the past. And, and, and just reiterate that and consolidate that. That might be helped rather than bring in new material. Just a thought. Might make it a little bit easier. So, um, yeah, just looking forward to the call. Great, great to see everyone and connecting and moving on. Catalina, how are you feeling and what do you expect out of today's call? Thank you, Henry. Um, it's good to see everyone again. We had a, a commitment last week, so we were unable to attend. But uh, I'm sure you, you guys had a rich conversation as usual and I look forward just to engage and see um, and see how we go. And I'm really looking forward to actually see how the energy and the, 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 the dynamic of the whole richness of the discussion and, and the context is actually uh, unfolded without the moderate with changing moderators. So that's it. Pete, how do you feel when you take it? What do you want to take out of today? Thanks, Kat. I'm feeling very good. Beautiful spring day here in Brisbane. Um, I, like you, I'm, I'm curious to see the, um, the interplay without Kelly being here. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure Kelly will be back next week. I'm, I think he's healing uh, from what I've heard. Um, Susan, how do you feel and what would you like to take away today? I feel very grateful to be here with you folks. I ended up um, spending last evening with another Zoom group that was on a different topic. And I can tell you that I have a deeper appreciation for our structure how we do things, um, but I'm really encouraged for that growing perspective. Henry, have you gone? Yep. Who's, who's available? You got CJ, Julian. Julian, how do you feel and what would you like to get out of today? Thank you, Susan. Hi, everyone. So, um, well, I'm, I'm feeling uh really motivated today i would like to uh, take out from today um a nice conversation about how can and, and, and get out from you or from uh, what we are studying from Boki. um what what kind of learnings can we take to people to maybe um, get a better sense of uh, how education is important uh, to rethink it. So I'm thinking to join. 
all our ideas that came up to that. Um, I think uh, Anne, uh, you you haven't right? Okay, so yeah. Anne, how do you feel today, and uh, what would you like to take of the call today? Thank you very much. Um, okay, I I'm so glad I, I found a way in. So I couldn't get in the you know the the regular way, and I found another way in for being a technologically uh, challenged person. Thank you very much. Ah uh, yeah. Um, so okay, it looks like the dynamics today will be different again. I, I'm 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 looking forward to to engaging with all of you, right? So I think that's uh, primarily um, what I'm looking forward to today. Okay, so um, Lisa, how do you feel, and uh, what do you expect to take away today? Thank you, Anne. Um, I'm feeling okay, although as Henry is probably aware, we're about to go into another lockdown here, so that doesn't thrill me. I'm have to admit. Uh, hopefully it's all to the better and saving lives though, so I understand and will do my best. Uh, therefore, I'm looking to get some, I guess, just to be with you all and to hear the conversation and to maybe move forward a step, and I have no idea who's been or not. But Raffers, is it back to you, Steve? Oh, Raffers? Okay, Raffers, Raffers how do you no, feel so and what would you like to get out of today? Uh, thank you, Lisa. No, actually, I feel great. Happy to be here. Again, concerned about Kelly's health, but I'm certain he will be okay soon and back, back at the call. What I expect to get out today is again a feeling of community. I mean, obviously, Kelly will be missed, but the fact that we are all here means that we care. We care enough to, to be here and, and to share and to keep on learning and exploring, back your thinking, and making it again more, more and more relevant today. As he was, I think, when he wrote what he, what he wrote. So, he wants to expect to get out of the day is again more understanding and more sharing and more definitions, perhaps, to see where where the new moderators take us today. So that's what I feel, and that's what I expect. CJ, how about you, mate? How do you feel? And what do you expect to get out today? Thank you, Rafos. Um, I'm feeling good today. Sunday, mo Sunday morning here, and. What do I want to get out today will be uh, new experiences. So, so this session will be a new experiences for me to also understanding what experiences does and what it means. So I'm here for, I guess for today is for new experiences. And okay, Nelson, Nelson, how do you feel and what do you want to get out of today's session? Thank you, CJ, I'm feeling good. Uh, thank you for this call. And uh, my speech today is uh, to uh, learn more about uh, invoking thinking. And okay, uh, more uh, about uh, definitions of words. Thank you. That I feel and my, that is my, my speech today. Steve, what do you think? What do you think? And what do you expect today? Well, you kept good track of who's been sharing and who hasn't, Nelson. So congratulations on that. Um, and uh, if you guys noticed, Joe, Joseph put a post out there saying that he got an email from Kelly saying he's doing better. And for those of you who don't know, Kelly went into the hospital dehydrated. Uh, Raffers told me, and then almost didn't show up tonight, Raffers, you about freaking gave me a heart attack. Uh, but uh, so, uh, so, and our thoughts and prayers are with Kelly. Anytime one is in the hospital, one wants to get out as soon as possible. So um, there we go. So our thoughts and prayers are off to Kelly. Okay. So how am I feeling? Well, I'll tell you, I'm, um, I'm excited because we've defined the whole universe, and and tonight uh, we get to we can either follow up on last week. What I kind of had in mind was we've been our job here has been creating a new uh, lexicon, a new dictionary. What do these Bucky terms mean in terms of our context in our lives today? How would we update that wording? Bucky did most of his writing in the '60s. You know these words that are now some of the words that Bucky used for the first time are now becoming major uh, memes and words in our environment. I'd like to know like what words have stuck out for you? Like we've had this discussion for the last 
couple months here, at least the last six weeks, what words have stuck out for you? Um, what's been important? And maybe what would you like to get clarified? Or do you have a word that you really are glad you learned? And, and what does that word mean to you? So let's just take a few minutes and roll around the group. And, um, and let's see what each person has to do in terms what what words you think have meaning for you. Got it? Got the assignment? So we'll do like we do our intros. I'm going to jump to Joseph and say, Joe, uh, what words have come up for you or word? Uh, what words are you excited about? What words do you have question about? And then when you're done, let's list them down and then pass it on to somebody else. Okay. Um, I mean, just looking, I, I thought last week, I mean, I think recalibration has been one of the more, more important words for me. Uh, and just understanding what that actually means uh, is a way of actually zoning, kind of honing in. Um, uh, and I'm looking at uh, some of the other things that have, uh, uh, I'm looking through some of my words. Uh, I'd say uh, micro well, insight. Go ahead. Go ahead. Micro, micro and macro. Uh, micro and macro, obviously. And then, and then, uh, micro incisive, macro comprehensive as well. Um, uh, initially relevant and uh, uh, or lucidly relevant. Forgive me, not initially relevant. Lucidly relevant uh, as well, and almost relevant as well. Because that reason that is important to me is because that involves borders and drawing kind of boundaries. So, and as Kelly had said last week, what's the boundary? That's the first thing he asks. Uh, and I, that's something that I've been starting to think about with system thinking, systems thinking more than anything is the idea of drawing boundaries in order to understand how to actually uh, recenter myself. So, cool. So, let's that, limit it to two, two or three. Okay. So get the chance. Pass the pass the buck. We got some good ones. Recalibration, micro macro, micro incisive, macro comprehensive, lucidly relevant and almost relevant, and then boundary. That's what I've written down from what you said. I hope I got yeah. it. I get it. You got cool. it. Pass the ball. Okay. Uh, Peter. <laughs> Thanks, Joseph. Yeah. I'm laughing to myself because I'm in a different notepad than what I've been in for any other <laughs> Bucky call. <Yeah. laughs> so I'm manically searching for, for the notes that I've had, um, which is a bit challenging. Look, without um, going down that rabbit hole, I think the biggest word that's, that stood out for me, and I don't know if it's a Bucky word or a, a um, Kelly word, but regeneration. Um, and for me, why that sticks out is um, <clears throat> every system we have in the world today is polluted from relationships to politics, to money, to science, to religion, to medicine. There's, there's a lot of pollution. And the reason there's a lot of pollution is the, the context underlying the systems is not a regenerative context it's it's actually a destroying context so for me regeneration that that things can renew in and of themselves in a aligned uh healthy way okay is there a oh, way hang on i'm going to summarize what you each person says if that's okay i'm making mad crazy notes you said regeneration was your big word but you also said pollution which seems to be adverse to regeneration. And then you said the context of the system, which again refers to this outer boundary within which regeneration occurs. So I got those three things from you. And most of them are keyed around the idea of regeneration. And let me just say that, that you hit kind of a nail on the head. What I've really gotten out of this over the last few weeks is that words are best defined in the context of a system. Because a word in this context can mean something different than the word than the same word in that context, and yet the function of the word is exactly the same. So I love the idea of understanding regeneration 
and within a system. Anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. And then you passed the ball to Cat, right? I All right. started to. <laughs> what? I said I started to. Yeah, I get it. Well, I interrupted you. So, will you continue? Okay. Yo, yeah, Bob. Would you uh, pick a word, please? Yeah. So, I think that um, one of the definite, very constant words that it seemed very important is at the same time that it could be complex is the definition of entropy, entropy and anti entropic, particularly. You know, and like a understanding it not only from the physical aspect but the context that we actually refer to just you know they're radiating and going out and how anti-entropic is the coming the coming together um those two are actually quite um um i actually like that there's obviously a lot the one that we when we talk about the six motions in the universe they're actually pretty kind of fundamental to actually understand motion but you know there, there are six that don't, and there are lots. So you just made us for two or three. So, um, you want to pick somebody, or you want to? Oh, how about we go to um, Mini Mini Mo? How about Lisa? Thanks, Kat. Okay, well, and Lisa, before you start, yeah, okay, Kat, you said entropy and entropic, and then you said. Understanding radiation and the concept of anti-entropic, anti-entropic, and the, just the concept of radiation and motion. So I got kind of that context. Is that about it from you? Pretty close. Good. I'm taking notes because my job is to help. You guys may not know this, but Kat and Pete and I and, and Joe are on a committee to kind of create this dictionary that you guys are putting together. So, so we're listening very closely is what we're doing. Okay, good. Um, uh, but just a clarification, uh, Steve, it's just mostly like in the sense of motions, you know, we go entropy, we go anti-entropic, and then we go all that, the, 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 uh, also the, Radiation. the six, the six uh, movements of the universe, the six, uh, what is that, the, yeah, whatever. Anyway, go on, Lisa. <laughs> okay. Um, I have chosen four words but they're really two things so conscious awareness was one and brain mind brain slash mind um and i i still i really like the brain slash mind thing because i don't think that's a concept that is generally accepted or understood by most of the population and i think if we did understand the difference that could make a difference and the conscious awareness is almost similar you know we, we have to be conscious of the words we say what we mean all that kind of thing so those are mine and I will pass on to Henry as soon as you have pray see that for me Stephen okay so I have conscious awareness and brain slash mind yeah. And the conscious awareness rotates around the idea that it is important for one to be conscious of what one says. Those are, that's what I heard you say. Did that make sense? Yeah, but it's also, you know, conscious of everything really, but in this we're talking about words. But yeah, we need to be conscious of our actions, our deeds, our words, all that stuff. Okay, I'm going to add actions to it. Okay. And put and put everything in parentheses. Everything is too big for me. You blew my brain out with the word everything, Lisa. Okay. Sorry. All right. It's okay. Who is next? Henry. 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 Okay. Um, the word that that I kind of liked and, and came out of our discussions was sensorialize. I'm not sure if Bucky actually put it together, but a lot of our discussions and a lot of, lot, of, lot of Bucky's writings was, was what, what he wanted people to do was to sensorially comprehend precession. So if we can sensorialize, use that as a word as opposed to visualize, it will take us closer because we talked in one discussion about the nine senses of the human body. It's omnidimensional. There's lots of dimensions that come into it. And this is the in between and around that often people miss. So this comes back to, can you sensorialize your future? 
and it's a, it's the apprehension first. Do we, can we apprehend our senses? Do we know how they work? Can, can we feel them? Are we in tune with that? And then once we're in tune with it, we can see it. Can, do we comprehend it? Can we use it in a way that actually works for us? Can we go with the flow? Can we feel it? Can we can we push it push it out to where it needs to be? That, that's that's where I kind of got a lot out of those those sessions. Okay, so and 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 pick somebody in a second. Go ahead and pick somebody. Be, so then I'll Raffers come back. Raffers will be next. Raffers up okay, next. Raffers. Okay, Raffers. Hang on a second. Sensorialize. Sensorial comprehension of precession. All right. On the basis that we have senses, we said the number nine, but you know there could be many senses. I think Susan pointed out that in in Scientology there's like twenty two senses or something. What's that number, Susan? Huge. I, I still haven't found that notebook. <laughs> yeah. So it's a huge number. Whatever it is, we want to use have a sensorial comprehension of precession, and with the interesting idea. If we apprehend, if we have an apprehension of our senses, we can somehow move into the future or be in the future, kind of. You said something about the future there, right? Yeah. I you mean, said, like, people visualize the future. When you do yeah. goal setting, you visualize it. You, you see yourself in that position. Can you feel yourself in that position? Yeah. Do you know what the air temperature would feel like? Yeah. What your skin temperature would feel like? That's right. All those yeah. senses that come into it. This is a profound concept because actually it could be said we're living in the future right now and to be sensorially able to comprehend that whole thing. So I'm not trapped by the past. This is what you're inviting us to do, right? With these words. Okay, good. I think that's how human beings create the future. Yeah. 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 And maybe there's no creation of the future. Maybe there's just manifesting the future. I don't. <laughs> I don't want to be too argumentative here. Raffers, that word and manifest. Yeah. Manifest. That's a good you word. Like yeah. manifest. Okay, good. Yeah. We'll put, I'll put manifest in parentheses, even though. Okay, go ahead. Raffers. Okay. <clears throat> go. Tricky, tricky to pick in just a, a couple of words, but I have. Uh, <clears throat> all right. What, what has res resonated with me lately is this idea of us as being tuners. I mean, tuning in, tuning out, and uh, and how actually and that's how we explore and how we learn, and uh, and then and also the concept that we're always in between. We are in between the present; it's actually between the past and the future. And we can take again talking about what we, what we you have already mentioned. If we can take different positions, and again the fact that we can actually stand in the future and pull. The present from the future. I mean, that's also a great concept. Again, there's a matter of tuning as well. Do I tune in the past or do I tune into the future? And how aware and present I am. I mean, that's right now. And also, <clears throat> the concept of between relates nicely to lag, which is again, to me, a critical concept that most people don't understand. I mean, the idea of lag. There's always a distance between where I am and where I want to get or so as I, I understand lag, I understand how long things take to develop or to become or, or, or to change or to transform, whatever. <clears throat> so understanding lag becomes more and more critical. And I, I want to add just two more words that relate to gener regenerative and the opposite of regenerative, regenerative in back as well, which is livingry and weaponry. And interestingly enough, <clears throat> all these problems within Australia and the French and the US and the UK, it happens around weapons. I mean, how crazy is that? <laughs> to throw the world into turmoil because of some crazy submarines. Who needs them anyway? <clears throat> but again, Bucky was very aware of that and said, why don't we build livingry? Because livingry regenerates. Weapons just destroy and kill. So, so in terms of nature, weapons go completely against nature. And again, relates to how evolved we are. I can understand, you know, the cavemen needing weapons to actually fight other cavemen or rather tribes to protect their own tribes and, you know, go hunting and whatever. But we go so much beyond that. But we still <clears throat> move around the same concept of 
And then we accept that we need an army to protect ourselves. I mean, crazy, crazy concept in today's world. But anyway, anyway, so that's the way that resonated with me. Thank you. <laughs> okay, who's the next person? And then I'll summarize what you said. Oh, the next person, let me see. Uh, so that would be Susan, next person, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Susan's on standby. So Rafford, you said that what's come up for you is this tunus, the mm -hmm. idea of in and out, and then that moves to in betweenness, mm -hmm. and then you talked about tuning. Tuning is a big word. Tuning into the past, tuning into the future. You talked about change and transformation, change in the context of transformation, I do believe, and then relative to this concept of regenerative, you brought up. I think you said living re and mm -hmm. weaponry. Yes. So living re is how we grow and go and weaponry is how we tear things apart and destroy each other. And then you talked about that in terms of, you know, why we're so focused on armies to protect ourselves. I think I got, that's kind of what I wrote. Is that good? Yes. yes Anything else good. you want to throw in there? No, man. Okay, no, man. good. Pretty accurate. Thank you. <laughs> All right, good. Susan, so, I'm taking um, notes. I'm taking notes. Go ahead. <laughs> so, uh, pushing on the definition that I have back from 9-11, sustainable refers to within one cycle, regenerative becomes something else. And that distinction, I think, is just, just huge. I love that there's critical mass building on that word. Um, I saw a Walmart commercial walking through the hospital, and it said sustainability is not enough. We need to be regenerative. So if Walmart, if Walmart is doing that, something's happening. Um, and then the other like super cool one that I loved was that I kind of put together instinct is tied to participatory imagination. Mm. Cool. So Nelson, you'll be the next victim. <laughs> okay, good. So wonderful. So you brought up uh, sustainability has seems to have something to do with one cycle where regenerative is something else. And that's for us to figure out. And evidently Walnut, Walnut, Walmart has made it a marketing phrase, which is, is that cool or is that scary? Because we just screwed up whatever regenerative was. We just got it screwed up with Walmart. Yeah, no, so, they planted a butterfly garden. That was their idea next to the beautiful. store in the parking lot. <laughs> Yeah. And then you said, I'm so glad you brought this word up. You said instinct as it ties to anticipatory imagination. Yeah, that was a big word that came up for me, too. Does that summarize your contribution there, Susan? Good. Great. OK, Nelson, right? Right. Thank you, Susan. OK, um, I have um, two words. Uh, uh, two important words for me. And uh, first is um, cooperation and uh, collaboration. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, very important uh, for me because, because when, when I have um, awareness uh, in, a in, in a company, uh, it's, uh, it's important for the uh, sustainability Mm -hmm. So see, sustainability, uh, uh, because uh, the um, part economic and environmental and um, social, okay, uh, is uh, are are necessary um, are, are necessary for um, the stakeholder. Uh, I help, uh, the company help, helps uh, the stakeholders and the stakeholders helps the company. It's, uh, okay, it's necessary for the, for the sustain, excuse me, sustainability. Uh, uh, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if you understand me. <laughs> I'll summarize and we'll have a discussion about it in just a second. Who's the next person, Nelson? Okay, the next person is uh, uh, Kay. Is who? CJ? CJ? Okay, CJ. Okay, CJ, hang on to your hat, dude. All right, so Nelson, 
you brought up a couple of things, um, cooperation and collaboration yeah. and the significance of those relationships in terms of how a business or a company operates. And you talked about sustainability within the context of having a couple of elements, at least an economic element and a social element. Yeah. Now, those are both present in your concept of sustainability. Did I summarize okay? Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, Thank you. All right. <laughs> all right. CJ. Good afternoon, Stephen. Mm -hmm. I was flipping through the notes, and yeah, there's quite a fair bit of things I've written down, and uh, it, it felt like, oh, I'm, I'm revising, and there are certain words that just... <laughs> When I look back, all oh, right, I learned this before. And uh, two things that, that, that stuck out for me, um, one is uh, synergy, especially when it comes to synchronization and how we work. And uh, as I was just rushing through and listening at the same time, uh, it's a lot about how we work and how the energy moves and flow. And uh, something that, that uh, ring in my mind is... Um, uh, so I wrote it down, energy is differentiating out, synergy is integrating in. I have no idea why I wrote that. <laughs> but it, it meant something when I wrote that at the moment. Um, so synergy is something I guess all of us pick it up when, when we are born, we just naturally do it. Uh, when we are out of sync, that's where things go haywire around us. So synergy is one thing. The other word which... Um, which got me fascinated was this thing uh, given by Bucky. Uh, let me see whether I can pronounce it properly. Uh, ephemerization. So um, it's quite fascinating that uh, Bucky, at so many decades ago, defined the technology advancement to a point where we we'll, we we'll be doing, we we we'll get to do more by by uh, um, by having less kind of thing. So I've written down here more with less until eventually you do everything with nothing. So looking at it is us having a phone, like a smartphone, almost everything is centralized there. I get to pay my bill. I get to connect with people. Uh, I get to chat with people. I get to do my work. I get to communicate. And last time there are like so many other devices that does individual things. And I wonder where they will lead us towards. Um, ephemerization is happening, but my question is, I think we are doing more when that happens as an individual. That was my experience. Um, I'm looking forward to see how that turns out. So that, that's the two things that came across my mind. Uh, next will be Anne. Okay, hang on a second. I've got to get another piece of paper. You guys have created quite the list here. Okay, Anne, you're next. Hang on a second. So CJ, synergy in terms of synchronization and the idea of how in work, energy moves and flows, moving in and moving out. You talked about ephemeralization, doing more by doing and having less, citing the smartphone, how you can throw away your calculator, the TV, the radio, the computer, you can throw it all out and you have one little thing in your little phone and you get to pay your bills and talk to your friends. So we're doing more with less and less. Yeah, interesting. If I got it? Yeah. Okay, Thank Okay. You. Anne. Unmute, please. You got, you're still muted, Anne. You're muted. There you go. Got it. Thanks, CJ. And thanks, Raffers. Uh, thanks, uh, Stephen, sorry. Um, okay. Um, for me, it's the, these, Three, uh, three ideas coming together, right? The in and out, in between, and all around. Okay, um, they don't exist one without the other. Uh, we generally, we look at one component, but um, having that, uh, that clarity to look at all uh, makes it so, so much clearer because there are lots of things in, uh, you know, there were lots of things where you can see the concrete thing. And then there's so many other things in between that generally we, we are, it's like, where do you place them? How do they come into being, right? And then you realize that they're the in-betweens. It makes it so much clearer, you know? Um, the things that you can't explain, 
Yeah, then when you fit it into the in between, it becomes really clear. Uh, the other one, and I, I don't think, I don't know is, if it's linked to Buck, uh, Bucky, but uh, I think Stephen, you're the one who brought it up, that extreme mindfulness. How, I don't know how it relates, but I, I felt that that was really powerful. Um, and um, the one area I really want to get more clarity on is this whole idea of pre-session. Yeah, because I think you all have uh, gone through it before, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm still trying to fit everything into what is this idea of pre-session. Yeah. Thank you very much. I think, uh, Joe, you haven't been yet, right? Okay, no. Julian. No, I haven't. Hang on a second then. Okay, Anne. You've talked about the ideas of in, out, between, and around. Yes. And you said how this seems to give you a complete picture of a thing so that now you notice so many things in between because you have this context of in, out, between, and around, and it helps you see, a, get you more clarity as to exactly what you're working on. That's kind of what I got from what you said. And then you said something about extreme mindfulness, which is very flattering because that is the name of my book I'm writing. Oh. And it's over here. I can show you a stack of crap over here that's about to be my book. And hopefully in the next six weeks, you'll be able to read the book and I'll send it out to you guys first. So you can just pick it freaking apart and say, what the hell do these words mean? And hopefully you'll see a bunch of Bucky words in there and stuff that I've learned out of this conversation because it's been so helpful and so wonderful. Okay, so let me, I dropped my sheet. Um, and then you talked about the concept of precession, which I think goes back to this concept of the in, out, between, and around, and all these parts that you're seeing in there in this constant motion of these systems, um, which takes extreme mindfulness, by the way. So I'm glad you put it in there. Okay, good. Anything I left out, Anne, or is that pretty good? Perfect. Perfect. All right. Thank very, you. very good. Julianne, how are you doing? I mean, not how you're doing in what you, what are your words, my friend? Uh, don't worry, it happens all the time there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the, the costume. Okay, so um, uh, I've been hearing you and, and also I was reviewing, I got to be able to review my notes. Uh, there's a lot of things that you have already said, but I wanted to, on one side, uh, focus on, on those words that uh, I think are more relevant to, to what education I am looking into. And also I wanted to specifically for some uh, words, um, see if you can help me out uh, to solve uh, 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 some confusion and some things that I, I haven't understand so well. So. Uh, from one side, uh, I remember very well uh, about what we talk about comprehension and apprehension. And yeah, from one side, I, I was like, okay, uh, comprehension is the things that you are uh, comfortable with. So when you understand something and when you uh, really see it clearly, so, so you feel comfortable, you, 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 you comprehend it. Uh, and from the other side, I, I was thinking, okay, an apprehension is uh, sometimes when you feel fearful, when, when, when you start uh, to doubt or, or, or you are not sure of some, how something is going to outcome. And that for me was reasonable because they are kind of the opposite uh, on, on, on each side. But I also got to, to, to read apprehension in other contexts and I realized that maybe there's something that I still don't get about apprehension because it's like also similar to comprehension. So, so it's also getting to understand something but in a, like in a tunable way maybe. So I'm, I'm not sure how, how is that also related. Maybe it's more than one definition on the same word. Um, I uh, I have heard you about self regeneration, and yeah, I, from one side I, I think like the body itself, our our own body, uh, teaches us teaches us a lot about self regeneration, but there are so many things that don't have that quality. So so I'm also confused on 
on okay so self generation what does it apply so uh, maybe it applies to everything because uh, we can turn all into carbon and back again to a mineral or something like that i don't know um also i, I remember uh, uh, this one is one that you didn't mention uh, or i at least i, I didn't hear of uh, inter transforming and we were like really screwing our heads up around that word. I, I remember. I like the things about the difference about brain and mind. I also got, got it annotated. Mm, there's not only a word in specific, but the use of aggregate, aggregation. I also remember like aggregation was always present in different ways. So yeah, from, from one side, like the universe is this aggregation, but also like the mind is this aggregation. So ah, I, I, I thought it was really interesting on, on that side. Um, I remember also extero and intero. And then we started to talk about micro and macro. So we started to talk about, okay, so if you look into yourself, you have a micro verse, a micro universe. <laughs> so you can dig very deeply inside um, different from, from, from outside. Um, synergy, synergy, for instance, uh, 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 as you were also saying, like the synchronization of energy, but this is some, a question because Manu, uh, I, I, uh, I uh, annotated here in my notes that Manu said, like you can only calibrate energy. You, can, you can't calibrate syn synergy. So if synergy is the synchronization of energy, uh, is the energy itself, so, okay, isn't that a, par a paradox? Um, and uh, another thing is, here, here I, I annotated that Bucky, uh, I think this is something Kelly, Kelly said, that every human is a special case scenario. Each one is unique and, and he took that from, from Bucky. So, so I also uh, write that down because it, it caught my attention. And another thing that I'm not very sure that I also uh, wanted to, to, to maybe help uh, ask for help is about the consciousness of the mass. So I understand the consciousness of the self, like I think the consciousness is really difficult to scientifically explain, but uh, we, we have uh, do our way to, to explain consciousness. But explaining the consciousness of the mass is like, okay, what the hell? <laughs> how, how can we make that uh, understandable um, for, 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 for anyone outside of this context? So, so yeah, that, that's, that's my uh, important things about words that you have um, talked about. Okay, now that should be everybody, right? I think that's everybody, yeah. Yeah, anybody I think left? missing one person, Steve. Who? You, Steve. You. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, uh, but first, then I'll put Steve as next. So get ready, Steve. Okay, I'll get ready. Thank you very much. All right, and so I'm going to summarize, uh, Julianne, I'm going to summarize something you said now, but I'm going to do something weird. Just before you said micro, macro, and talked about this deep insideness, you said something else before micro, macro. Does somebody yeah. remember? What did it you was say? Extero and intero. Oh, yeah. Okay, all right, good. And I'm the guy who brought up extero and intero because those words were in the context of uh, perception. And those were one of the senses. So exteroception is how I use my senses to experience what is outside of me. And interoception is how I use those same senses or something else to determine what's going on inside of me. So each human being has extraoception and interoception. Got it, Julian? So it's how, it's how I use my, extraoception is how I use my senses to relate to the uh, outside. And interoception is how I use my senses to relate to what's going on inside of me. 
That's how I understand yeah. introception and extraception. Now, somebody else may have gotten something right. else out of it, but that's basically what I introduced there. Okay, good. Wow, and you may you had the biggest list. I'm I'm sure Joe is jealous because I cut him off, but I noticed really I wasn't good. cutting you off. Of course, we had more time, and I wasn't sure where everybody'd be. So, Joe, I apologize to you. Julianne, there's more you talked about then. I'm going to summarize this as quickly as I can. You talked about, first of all, comprehension versus apprehension, and how your first you thought that maybe that if I comprehended something, I was more comfortable with it. I could see it more clearly. And if I was apprehending something, I was more fearful with it. I had some doubt about it. I wasn't quite as clear about the outcomes. And then you said, well, maybe that there's something more to these definitions. And you're just looking more deeply. Yeah. And, and before I get, uh, okay, good. Let me just make a note here. Is that maybe... That, that's the question mark for me in, in apprehension that I think that in other contexts, like apprehension, it's not about fear or about- Yeah, I got it. That, that, that thing. Yeah, maybe there's more to it than that. And I totally agree with you, just, to, just so you don't lack any confidence because my sense of apprehension has something to do with fear or some kind of discomfort about what I'm seeing. I'm apprehending it. I could see it from the sense of apprehending grabbing but there is this thing about being apprehensive. And so this could be a language thing, dude, you know, and uh, it could be all about how I'm using yeah. a word relative to thing. And it brings back this whole concept that I introduced a minute ago that what I've learned on this call is that to define a word within the context of the system in which you are using it can make the word actually change. It could be the same word, but as it goes into a different context, it means something different. So I, one of my things on this has been to say, okay, I'm going to define a word. Now I'm going to list systems and I'm going to say, okay, how does this work? How does this word work in this system? And we, and who was it that mentioned Tunis? I think it was rappers that mentioned Tunis, this concept of Tunis and Fornis that I've gotten off of this call, the tetrahedron, the double tetrahedron, and then the implied octahedron inside of that. Pah! So we go from tunus to fourness to like eightness or maybe 30 tunus. I'm not exactly sure. But this idea that things occur in a context. Okay. Uh, gee, I kind of went on my own rant there and I didn't finish with what you were saying. That was part of my share. I'll come back to know what you were saying. Uh, so maybe there's more than one definition. And then you said you talked about self regeneration and talked about our body in terms of you're contemplating how regeneration is cool, but self regeneration is a process. And you're looking to understand that. You talked about inter transforming, and the word transform was brought up earlier. You talked about your uh, sensitivity towards the mind brain idea. Then you talked about this concept of um aggregation the mind is about the aggregation of things aggregating things uh we talked briefly about extra intro you said micro macro uh, with the invitation the micro invites you to look deeply inside was was what i noted then synergy um and um in terms of being able to count that Ma that manu said that you can calibrate energy, but you cannot calibrate synergy, which is pretty profound because synergy, synergy is the sum of all the parts. You can calibrate the parts, but synergy indicates there's, that there's something more than the sum of the parts. That's, I think, why Mano said that. Do you get that? I calibrate all the parts, and then something bigger than that happens, which I think relates back to anticipatory imagination. All these words are so cool. All right. And then and then uh, that every human is a special case scenario. That was something else that's come up for you. And right. then you thought of consciousness in the terms of self-consciousness and then consciousness, I think you said, in terms of the masses. Right. Yeah. And that's right. what we talk like, about the critical mass. What? Go ahead. Yeah. Like if the. Like there's I'm some mass anything. consciousness, like a consciousness that we all share. Oh, okay. Um, Shared consciousness, kind of. Okay. Like, Collective yeah. consciousness. Yeah, What's sorry? that? I think it is also in um, as collective consciousness. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's I, very I, young. I think, very I think young. It was something that Kelly said. Let me see here. I got it. Yeah. Consciousness is for the mass. What is already there, but you know, you now know that it exists. Aha. Uh -huh. So your idea there is that consciousness exists for the mass and that I'm part of that consciousness. Is that what you're saying? It, that, that is something that I think Kelly said, and I just and write it down because it, it, it was like, okay, that's interesting. I want to take yeah. a note for it later. <laughs> okay, good. All right, did I do okay? Excellent, excellent summary. Stephen. Summary, Thank okay, you. good. <laughs> Thank you. See, I'm writing these down because somehow this was our assignment, Pete and I and Catalina and Joseph a while ago, is to somehow catalog this. So here's my thoughts, because I also have been very infatuated with this concept, anticipatory imagination. And I think it has very much to do with apprehension and comprehension of future, which exists already. So this idea like Henry suggesting that I can live from there and that it's not like the past is my total reality. The brain stores that. So my brain thinks the past is real because it has memories, but just as real as the future. And if I don't get out of my brain and move into mind, I'm not, I'm going to miss that. That's kind of what I pick up from that. So anticipatory imagination, micro and macro is huge for me. I mean, I, I really love your guys' list here. And I, I wish I was the smartest, some of you, because I'm oh, man, that's right. I'd forgotten completely about that. So I'm going to treasure my list today that you guys have given me. Thank you very, very much. Okay. Um, let me see if there's something else profound here. I, too, am very, um, uh, very, uh, this idea of mind and brain. I'm just constantly thinking about that. And I think it has everything to do with micro and macro. Somehow they seem to be big synonyms. Brain, micro, mind, macro. And, um, and I love this. Everything I've learned from you guys and from Kelly and Bucky about boundaries in the context of a system within boundaries and subsystems within those. So um, there. Now I have I have no idea what's left here. Also, in honor of Kelly, like I think he uses a lot of the word design. <laughs> like yeah. we should also take into account that everything is by design. Like uh, we we can ask ourselves, like okay, if comprehension is the opposite of apprehension, so maybe it's by design. If micro is the opposite of macro, maybe it's by design and. Like yeah. this duality also, we also have talked uh, a lot of times about duality. Um, but yeah, I, I think I, I think maybe those kind of words we can like also, like this is not about a specific words. I, I, for me, this is about how we use them. You know, that's the new way that I have found with you guys because that's awesome. Like. Uh, maybe I could read these words 10 times in a dictionary, but never in my mind I will have learned what I have learned here. <laughs> right. And I think, Julianne, you've you hit the nail on the head because my overall review of this whole thing is, I think, who was it? I think it was you that said you were going to look more deeply into like we were talking, you were talking specifically about apprehension, comprehension, and maybe there's something more. And I think that's the power of this whole discussion. I think that the power is not in the answer. The power is in the question. And I think the real power of this call for me is that I'm constantly in the question. As soon as I think I understand something, I then listen to one of you talking. I'm going, how did I miss that? Right? And so it's so imperative to continue to ask the questions. What does this word mean? And for me, it's what does it mean in operation in this context. So I've learned from this call that if I list a word definition, I'm gonna list it, I'm gonna list at least three other words that relate to that word so that I understand this definition in relationship to these other words. 
that's been powerful for me. Now that's it for my agenda. Um, somehow we want to create this dictionary to uh, each of us get to uh, create something that's going to apply in our lives. I love seeing all of these musings. And what I notice is, is that while we all have a consistent theme, each one of us have picked up something special. And I like that. Somehow we got to create a dictionary that handles that. Whew, my mind is blown. Comments, questions. What's going on for you at this point? Well, I think that we've talked about the idea of doing the, the, the dictionary or glossary on a platform so that it could be a living document um, so that people could come in and add their own special um, definitions or examples. At least that's what makes sense to me. I, I think that was the initial idea about Wikipedia is that it would end up being much more rich because people had a chance to come and add to it. And, you know, we've been at this, some of us in this group since 2007. <laughs> <laughs> and some of, some of the, the definitions have expanded. Some of them have just become more, you know, you can kind of get your hands on them better. Um, as new words and new ideas come into the society at large, the words allow the people to think and find their distinction and to calibrate more finely on the definitions. Yeah. And so this has been something I'm afraid to bring up. And I'm hoping that Kat is getting ready to punch her computer buttons. Because if what we what we started a month or so ago was this idea of going using Slack as a way for each of us to contribute to this living dictionary kind of thing. And it's proven to be awkward for me because I don't, I have enough technology handicaps already. Uh, but this Slack, I think maybe we could take a minute right now and Kat, do you mind going out there and just taking over and for a few minutes, show us Slack. And once again, let's review that so that you guys will feel comfortable about being able, if you have a, like an epiphany, you go out to Slack and you add it in, add in a word, or we create a conversation. And that was our goal. So, and without Kelly being here to say, no, let's don't do that. We have about 10 minutes before we get to close out of this call. Kat, do you mind sharing Slack one more time or is it not appropriate? Sure, sure, I can do that. Um, so Slack is basically, a, it's mostly used as a- you know, Want to share your screen? Share your screen. Platform. It's, it's a work platform where you could have channels and it's between within a group. You share anything from uh, just text to images to anything. Um, there's an actual group or a big channel called the Bucky Call, and there's a generality and it's been there for a long time already. So, and we think that there's something called channels, which is in here. And so each one is like a little section, you know, you can share about, this is the, the all channels that they have, but they have uh, definitions and com um, concepts, but this is a uh, thing that, even before us, um, when they were published. And we got, although Kelly still publishes our calls here, we got things about geometry, about random and space. So there's people before us that were contributing there. We have an option to even direct messaging to each other. So if I wanted to talk to Joe, I could just write a message to Joe and he will, uh, he, could, he could answer me back whenever he sees it. You could see who's online and who's offline according to the colors of each of the pictures. Um, but basically the, the, the thing that Steve wants to talk is we have a channel here called what we call definitions 2021 to make it clear which of the one because we have another one. So, and we created kind of a, a rules of boundaries of how to use this particular channel regarding when we share a definition, where we share in our, uh, what it means to us. So we could have um, understand or how we actually share and it doesn't get all messy all over the place. Um, so we think that, for example, when you can share, we have um, 
There you go. Joe, answer me back. <laughs> it's an example of, of direct um, direct messaging. Um, so we could have share anything you want. And even within that message, if you want to respond to that, you create what it calls a thread. So you click on this globe um, looking icon, and it means that it's actually going to create like a thread in that particular discussion. Um, and so let me just say, you guys, by clicking there where she did, she's creating a discussion relative to rules for Slack. So that comment yeah. would go under rules for Slack. And you, you could that? see here that on the day it says a reply. So if I make a different a different post general to the to the channel, um, for example, I'm just uh, example. This is this is a general uh, post, but um, if I want to see what is there, I have to actually check the replies, and I can keep adding things here. Um, and our goal, you guys, was to and set up see that is under here, so it doesn't get lost in the share in the constant sharing, right? Because you could share. There's a lot of things that could be shared. I can show you in the in a different channel, and we could create def. There's a lot. So anything that you share related to anything in particular, it wouldn't get lost because it's uh, related to that particular thread by making sure that you respond using the thread. Additionally, you could also tag someone. So you're making sure that that person gets not notified. So um, I could say uh, at Steve, um, I don't know, thoughts. So he will receive a notification that I, um, or, or a notification as a, um, that I particular attack him, not, on, not only I just share, but I just want him to actually see it. And he could do the same. He could reply back and tag back. Um, yeah, so basically we have this unused channel there that we want to, we thought we could use it for sharing. Only the person who published can delete the comment. So you could delete messages, you could edit messages, but only the person who published it can delete it. So you could delete one, the whole actual message, but the thread below it, below that, if someone else is published, uh, the thread is gonna remain. Um, yeah, and you could all share many things. You could share. Uh, and so you guys understand that Catalina first put a reply, which are now two replies. That was to that first idea of the rules. And by entering where she entered it, she entered something that's equal to rules and just below rules. So the idea would be that down below, that's a comment just to the rules. And then down below that, go ahead and scroll down, Catalina. There we go. That would be a definition of a word. So you guys can come in here and add these words as much as you like. Um, and yeah. so within that, we have the, we thought that, you know, the, the rules will help make sure everything to keep it standard. We said anyone who wants to propose a definition, uh, we just make it all in caps. Uh, for example, uh, boundary. So it means that I want to define that word and making sure that it's bold. So you could make it bold, italics, um, strike through, you could put numbers, you could put uh, bullet points, you could increase, um, add links. So there's a lot of little things that you could do around here. You could even uh, add reaction, like a, in this particular post I said, yes, I like it, yes, I don't like it. And you could put any kind of um, emoji uh, reaction there. Um, so there's a lot of, you could bookmark it if you need it. You could even say, I can't, don't have time now, but I want to make sure that I remember these. So you said, um, Marcus and read and read, and and it will it will show you the in your notification that it hasn't been read. So um, go ahead, and, go ahead and send boundary. Go ahead and send that. So, and I think so. Hang on, balls under the post, okay. and I said, yeah, so boundary. Okay. And the idea is if anyone proposes that, the person could also just share their own definition and then anyone else could come here, reply in the thread and they said, 
my definition is whatever, right? So you will see, and then I'll can post a different word. It could be uh, and it will be a difference. So all the sharing that we do, it won't get lost because everything will be under a thread. So that's our idea of keeping it uh, tidy. Um, and we can all contribute. Uh, I think that I've shared some of you the invitation to Slack, but I can share it again. I'll get the emails from the collective email when we get send the invitation. And um, the only potential uh, obstacle right now is that Kelly is the one that actually approves the invitation. So if I send the invitation to anyone who hasn't received it, Today, it might depend on actually when Kelly's able to say and click and say approve the invitation because he's the moderator of the whole thing. Okay, good. So the goal would be that you could come in here and either enter a word like boundary, or you could enter a comment or a reply underneath each word. So that would be the goal or operation. You know, why don't you go ahead and send out an invitation to everybody on this uh, can you just share this definition thing? I see a little share up in the upper right-hand corner. Mm. Where did I see that? I, you know, I thought I saw a share button up there. Have you scrolled all the way up to the top? There okay. it is. Yeah. Share message. So it would be depending on, it actually depends on the participants already of the actual channel who actually have access to it. Can you click to uh, Joe and to Peter and to Philemon and to Catalina and to, and to Liz and yeah. just stack all those people in there? Uh, yeah. Philemon, Susan, uh, Lisa. I, I have a little trick for, for Slack using that. Please do. I've, I've reused it, but I don't know as many tricks. What's your trick, Julianne? Like, Our channel. You know, I, I'm, I'm very used in, in WhatsApp uh, to to slide to the side a message to, to reply exactly on that message. But Slack doesn't have that. So what I do is exactly what Carolina is doing, uh, but sharing the message inside the same channel or the same conversation. So the, the, the quotes, is remain uh, uh, and in that way I can like talk to someone about okay I'm talking about this specific quote uh, or from someone else mm -hmm. but it depends on how you use it because sometimes it can be very long the quote but yeah, I don't know if you you, you understood <laughs> Well, this is frustrating for me because I, I don't <laughs> like learning curves on new technology, and yet it would be nice if we had a common place for us to post our definition. Yeah, if, if you want to perhaps extend your conversation with someone else in particular, I think what you do, just share this and say, I actually want to discuss with Joe. Hey, Joe, what do you think? Sure. You know, make sure that he knows. And he yeah. will respond. We will have a personal discussion about about that particular, he will receive a direct message about that particular post. That's um, right, that's right. I just right. share it here, so it's a uh, uh, different. Um, yeah, so that's, yeah, that, that's it might not be not problem. necessarily very clear how you ask how I explain it here, because I know that it's, uh, you know, it's, it might take a bit of time, a bit of, um, experimenting and actually trying to use and it's and it, it is not that difficult it's not that different from any other little app about uh, messaging and thing it's just that it's relatively useful workspaces so you could um, yeah it can actually share and even add all the apps um, you could even even have a talk you can even actually want to call joe and i can actually call joe and have a conversation through slack which is actually quite cool um and even a group call the only thing that you can't do in slack is actually share a screen so say that again the only thing you can't you do is you can't what? share a screen share a screen uh -huh. you cannot do that um but yeah so i think that we have some of them and i've so i'm just gonna send the invitation again and 
whenever Kelly will be able to see to approve the invitations to be officially sent. Because I said, I want to add, you know, I want to add everyone from the call. So I'm just going to grab the whole, the whole, um, you know, list of, I will have to go through the whole. Uh, not, there, not everybody. I have it there and now I send everyone. I oh, know that's not it. So I need to send these an invitation to um, everyone directly, actually. Okay, so like not everybody on this call is listed well, down below. The under ones email. that are not there, yeah. Okay, so let's scroll down there. Are you if you're not on that list, how do people who are not on that list get on that list? Okay. That's why I said we need to get it in, in send an invitation. To send an invitation, I actually have to, it has to be approved by Kelly. Okay. So in other words, we can go down through the email list that Kelly sends and find the people who aren't there and send everybody an individual invitation. And then Kelly would, because you need their email address and that email would be assigned to this. Yeah, uh, the email address is, could be the one that we um, send, um, the email that we receive the emails for this particular call. Right. Yeah. In other words, are you saying that the invitation to this call could be sent out of Slack instead of in an email group? Yeah. Yeah, interesting. So if you'd like to be on this deal, just send an email to me or to Kat or to Joe or to Peter and say, hey, I want to be on that list. And then we'll make sure you're invited. Oh, look, she's doing that now. Request invitations to the Bucky call. I'm in there a couple of times. You can delete yeah. delete my doubles. Laurent is in there a couple of times. I need this, I don't need this. I think the Rafa is there too. Maybe he's there. Um, Joe is there. Yeah, thank you, Catalina. I'm in. Oh, good. I think this is you, Steve, isn't it? Yeah, I, I'm also Steve at My Favorite Mentor. You can delete that contact one. I think I can delete all the red ones. You're deleting those because? The red ones, for either they're already there. No, I see the red ones show the doubles, right? Okay, good. Yeah, I think so. I'm not sure if you have taken the last version because maybe I'm not in the list. Yeah, what we need to do is uh, go through the actual email list that Kelly is sending out and then mm -hmm. add emails that are not already here. Yeah. Cool. Uh, there, there's mine. There's mine. Yeah. yeah. So if you are already here, please, you know, ignore it. But um, this is for Kelly to see it. Because he's the one that will um he's been sent and cool. Kelly, Kelly, which is the admin, will have to approve it. Yeah, cool. Well, that gave us a chance to explain that. That's been in the background and we've never had an uh, appropriate time. If anybody has any ideas on how to use this and and or you want to add a definition to to there, the rules for that are the first post in that thing. And then it talks about it, but basically it's just create a conversation and have the word be bold in all caps. And that way people can look down the list quickly and see an all caps bolded word and know that's a proposed definition. And if you want to get a, a, any ideas of what, how other people have defined it, that's the way to do it. Okay. Cool. Are you complete? Any questions for Kat about, or any questions from anybody about Slack? Okay. Um, good. I didn't give you much time, did I? All right. We've still got a few people on the call left. So, uh, uh, Henry, how you feel and what's your takeaway tonight? Um, really good. Really good. Um, I thought, good session, Steve. You did really well in facilitating and, and summarizing. And, and it, it's nice to review every now and then. It just shows the depth of where we've been you know, over the last, I guess, six months, 12 months of this year. And, and, and people are using the words, we're looking at it and, and putting it in sentences, verbalizing it, 
understanding it and, and embracing it a lot more. So I, I enjoyed the session. It was, it was very good. Everyone participated and contributed well. So I, I, I thought it went really well. Good job, Steve. Well done. Well, uh, Joe, how are you feeling? And what did you get out of the call today, mate? I'm feeling pretty good. And, um, you know, I just revisited a lot of definitions that um, that we've been discussing. And I really realized how much uh, I've been gaining from these calls. Uh, I've been gaining a whole different perspective on uh, systems thinking. And um, just it, it's really been a privilege uh, to be part of these calls. And uh, and eventually, I think I'm going to be able to see the whole world differently uh, if I keep with it. So um, I'm really excited about that. So that's what I'm taking away. Uh, Susan, how do you feel and what are you taking away? I feel really um, blessed to be in community with all of you. And what I tell people when they want to get me something, I, I let them know that definitions are my favorite gift. Um, I love it that it can so much expand my perspective and allow me to think in different ways. So I'm, I'm very grateful to each of you for sharing what you've seen from the outlook of those, um, those words. And I think that it, it helps us move into real application, which I uh, we've been working for so many years looking to understand the design, but I think maybe the, the very ultimate expression of that is to go out and apply it. And uh, so I love doing that with all of you. And CJ, how do you feel and what are you taking away? Mm -hmm. I'm feeling great. It's good to visit back um, all the things I have learned. Uh, I, I still feel I'm, I'm new here, hearing that this started like 2017. It's like, where, where was I then? Uh, uh, yeah, I was, I, was, I was once a young young kid that time. <laughs> now older with, with white hairs. Not, 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 not obvious on screen, <laughs> but obvious in the mirror. Um, uh, really get a lot when it comes to my deeper understanding of the concept of macro and micro. So there were times when when the new words come out, new definition comes out. I was asking, is it micro or macro? Uh, and yeah, that, that got me thinking towards also uh, the idea of agreement uh, that leads to collaborations and cooperations. Um, so, so this work does starting to play a role in my life when it comes to um, how I do things. And um, being able to connect here does allow me to have uh, clarity in terms of um, what I do, what I do, and what is happening out there that I'm not, not conscious of uh, before. Yeah, so um, love it. Especially one last thing would be the boundary. Uh, being able to define uh, what boundary is, what my boundary is, uh, observing what other people's boundaries are, um, that, that, that is very powerful. Okay, I'm going to pass it over to Nelson. Have you gone, Nelson? Yes. Okay, Thank Nelson, you. how are you feeling and what's your takeaway today? Thank you, CJ. Uh, are you feeling good? Uh, thank you for this call. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, Steve uh, for your for facilitator uh, in this call. Um, I um, I learn um, um, more uh, words and uh, more clarity in the uh, book is words. Thank you very much. Uh, that I feel and that I might expect. Annie, what do you feel and what do you expect today? Okay. Thank you, Nelson. Um, I I'm very appreciative of uh, today's session because I think it's we've been charging forward for the past couple of months, um, and uh, it's really good to just take a, a step back and, and have a look at uh, everything that uh, we have talked about. Uh, but more importantly, was uh, to to check in with everybody and. Like we, we have all these understanding of the words and the and so the concepts and um and so much of the world out there, but it's very interesting to to understand 
uh, what each of you and each and every one of us have taken away and what it is that we're linking the, the, the content or the concept with. Um, and uh, it's coming out in ways that I, I just, uh, I just didn't, didn't think about. Yeah. So that was really, really powerful for me. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I think Raffles haven't been yet. Raffles, uh, what is, how do you feel and what is the takeaway today? And we'll, Thank you, Anna. Today. Yeah. I'm very grateful for this call as well. <clears throat> I mean, I can be very grateful for Steve for actually taking over and also the support he got from Catalina and Pizza too, and Joe to make this happen. What I take away today is again the power of words. And the fact that the words that we discussed today <clears throat> are not, I mean, happening within this environment, but then they're not freaking out there. But now even Walmart is starting to take some of these words in, which is crazy. <laughs> to me, the concept of Walmart being re re regenerative is like saying Hitler is becoming <laughs> the, the defender of the Jews or something like that. <laughs> but still, still the fact that the word is out there and people starting to use it is, is, is very, very important, very relevant. So, so very grateful. And the fact that we <clears throat> that we come together and we we share what we have learned and, and the words that, that resound with each of us. And the fact that the words that other people bring in also can resound with everybody. Because we are actually sharing a building a community of understanding of what we are and, and how we use language in a different way. So very much, I'm very grateful also about the work we're doing with Slack. I think we, we can now create a space where we can actually contribute and and discuss meaning and uh, and expand with what we know <clears throat> and this is where that takes us so very very exciting uh, so that's my feeling that's my takeaway so lisa how about you how do you feel and what do you take away thank you Rufus. um thank you everyone today for the call um my how i feel is actually i have a request i would like you all to consider how you use the term guys because um I am not a guy, and I know it has been considered that it is a neutral term, but it is not. If, you, if I was to say to you, do you want to go out with that guy, or do you see that guy walking down the street? I think you might find that you sensorialize a man, not a non-binary person. So I would like you in the future to consider words like folks or y'all or fellow earthlings or fellow human beings instead of the word guys. And that is how I feel. Um, Peter, how do you feel? What's your takeaway? I uh, Thank you, Lisa. I loved what you just said. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed today. I thought it was great. Um, Steve, I, if, if I ever come back in another life and you're in that life, I want you to go to whatever university I'm going to and I'm going to pay you. You do the notes and I'll just do your notes and I won't go to the actual class. Um, I think the, the biggest thing that actually stood out for me today was um, Rafa's, Rafa's mentioned livery and weaponry. And whilst one part of me was focused on what everyone was saying and the meanings of the words and, um, and that journey, there was another part of my beingness that was feeling into the aspects of how words create a context and, and that the design that we have at the moment isn't actually a design, in my opinion, that allows humans to thrive. Because my view is if, if one person on the planet is starving or homeless or um, in oh, any yes. way being abused, then we are all being abused. We are all homeless. We are all poor. And um, so, you know, words and propaganda, um, we, we are the most, in, in, again, my view, we are the generation with the most propaganda being directed at us in history. And I said that to someone recently and they said, no, nah, that was Nazi Germany. And I'm going, 
No, they were amateurs. Um, the technology today is amazing what they can do with that. And in, in terms of context, if we had a livingry context as a collective, we would not allow one child to go hungry. We would not allow one person to be homeless. It, it's unacceptable. And um, we would not allow one person to be bullied or intimidated or have fear used against them to force them into whatever decision. And I, I just know in my being that it's this work and, and people like us and like the people who, who are you know, similarly contextually aligned, we're, in the, we're on the brink of we either choose to, to de-evolve as a species and destroy ourselves, or we consciously choose and make it part of the collective consciousness that humans and nature will thrive together and that we can make this world a really beautiful place for everyone. Um, so that's me for today. Um, Catalina. How do you feel and what did you take away? And I remembered her. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. That's how I feel. Um, um, it, was, it was a very interesting different call. So to thank you, Steve, for the uh, energy and uh, that you brought in um, and everyone else for participation because you, you clearly actually, Steve, made sure that everyone participated in it, not mm. only at the beginning and at the end, but even in the betweenness. So it's well done. Um, not necessarily a particular or a specific takeaway, but is and anything new has been said before, the importance of definitions and the importance of the meanings, but, but even more important, the context, because something could mean one thing in one context that completely something completely different in another one so the boundary which is what's in the context ends up being perhaps one of the fundamentals of designing or co-creating something that actually um, is for the genuine good of the whole um so yeah that's me julian have you gone how do you feel and what do you take away? Thank you, Catalina. Well, I, I feel um, a little bit more energized. Uh, I feel also more enthusiastic, in, enthusiastically, <laughs> is that how you said it? Um, because I, I haven't realized um, how valuable it's sometimes to take like a little rest and to just reflect on what have we learned the past weeks. Uh, so, so this session was special for me because um, I, I, I thought I have only learned like a couple of things that after reviewing all my notes, like, okay, there's something interesting here. <laughs> so, so thank you, thank you for that. And I also have something here that Stephen, because I wanted to thank Stephen for, for today's session. It was great. So, so um, I, I have something that he said here before. He said that without a definition, there is no way for collaboration or cooperation. So it's really um, something that uh, was interesting for me in, in that moment. And it still is really makes sense for me to, to, to be able to talk with you. And um, even though we have very different uh, backgrounds, very different uh, countries that we're living in, um, we, we, we have been able to set a way to at least agree on some things. And those little things that we have agreed, like, have allowed us to 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 make a lot bigger um, our, our all our learn, all of our learning. So so I'm great, grateful for that. And Lisa, I, I was also heard you about um, that in uh, when when you were talking about guys, 
that you, you, you feel sometimes uncomfortable with that. And I think that that's a really such a big debate in Spanish, you know, like in Spanish, uh, it's more common to find lots of words that are uh, only into the masculine and it's it's really difficult for us because it, it, we have been using these words for centuries and to ask ourselves and, and start to think about new words because we don't have any words at least for guys you have said like two or three alternatives but in spanish there are some words that we simply don't have any other words so so we have to made up words put an x on, on the word or an, a, a, an, an arroba a, a nut um so yeah that there's really weird things happening on, on the language on that side also so i i, I can see what you're uh trying to to, to explain thank you Rhoda. so i i who, who's left maybe stephen uh peter, peter no steve yes or joe Ah, Steve, Steve. Stephen. Okay, Steve. Stephen. Steve. How do you feel today and what do you take away? Okay, Juliana. Uh, Catalina is pointing at obviously my picture, but Peter's head is in the way. And so it looked like she was pointing to Peter. Okay. Um, wow, Juliana, I got to tell you that this, I've heard about this big debate over Latinx because Latino like refers to all the Latin people, all those people who speak Spanish or from those cultures. And, you know, and the white guys are trying to say, nah, let's use Latinx because we don't want to just refer to Latinos. Um, what a process this is. We're going through this human revolution of, of awareness shift. And I'll tell you, some people are having heart attacks and conniption fits and going to war over this stuff. And I, we are at a time, and I especially for, as you point out, your culture is just so used to being the masculine gender just applies as generic to everybody. And when it comes to this guy thing, Lisa, my daughter, Rachel, just bounced on me this last weekend on that. Because I said to my kids, and there, there was her and her husband and her two boys and her daughter, Belle, who's a sweetheart. And I said, why don't you guys? And she said, I'm not a guy. But you know what, Lisa? The idea of examining a sensorial Sen uh, sensation, a sensorial aspect of the word guys, you know, it really is a conundrum because you're absolutely right. Even though I, in fact, you were just calling me out today on the call because I said, guys, you were calling me out. My daughter called me out on the weekend and here you are going for it. So, uh, but this invitation to look at the sensorial uh, aspect of, I'm into vibrational etymology. I don't know if anybody's ever heard that term, but I think a human being uses words based on their vibration, which relates to something that's usually unconscious. That there's this cultural aspect or genetic even code. And I say a word that resonates with that code. And I'm not really sure why I'm saying that word over another word. And so, okay, Lisa, you kicked my butt tonight. And I'm gonna be contemplating this sensorial aspect of this word guy and me and Julie are gonna hang out and see if we can solve this problem for all of the, the Latinx people and for me, you know, and, because I'm, a, I'm the worst. Okay, um, let's see. I got a, I also have down, uh, CJ, we're gonna add the word agreement to your list because you threw that at the end of the end, my man. Uh, but I caught you. Oh, did he leave already? He had to leave? Oh, there you are. Yeah, CJ. Yeah. Gotcha. You threw an uh, agreement in there at the end, and so I've got you. I put it in your list. All right. Um, I've really been honored, you guys. I mean, it's so cool. I know that this, this call has like put me into a, an existential crisis about what words I'm using and how they relate to, relate to the reality that I'm creating. And as I listen to you guys, wow, you're going through the same process. I was so excited to hear everybody share. And uh, Julian, you're so quiet usually in this call, but that gum, you took the prize. If there was a prize for talking the most, it was you. You have the biggest list of words, dude. So congratulate. And Joe probably could have matched you, but I cut him off. So I owe Joe an apology. I owe Joe an apology. <laughs> okay. Um, 
it's really cool because you I'm six that minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's really cool because I'm only six minutes over the hour and a half deadline and but and Kelly extended this call for two hours. So we're landing this plane way early. And I'm just really thrilled. And I hope Kelly watches the recording and uh, sees how I how cleverly I changed the rules. And I'm late for the old rules. Um, there's an expansion going on, isn't there? Or an inspansion. That was one of my favorite words. Each person here seems to be looking, cal recalibrating and looking at the micro macro of their experience. And it was just so fun to hear you guys share and participate so joyously. And Kelly's gotta be proud. When he, when he is on this call, when he listens to this recording, he's gonna be thrilled because I know his goal is to see everyone contribute. That this is a cooperative, collaborative um, movement and the only way we're going to come to agreement is by figuring out what these words mean. So it's been my honor uh, to participate in this process. And I, and I was hoping that looking back and kind of debriefing on everything uh, would be very, very helpful. And um, it sure has been for me because I've overlooked a few things. And so I'm going to take these notes and, uh, and look at them. Thank you all very, very much. I think that ends our call for tonight. Yeah. Awesome. Everybody good? Thank you. Hey guys. Have a great week. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye. Take care, everyone.